Good morning and welcome to uh, this Trinity Sunday morning here at Emmanuel Wakefield Church in uh, Emmanuel Church in Wakefield, Massachusetts. Um, and on this Memorial Day weekend, I am so sorry that the weather prevented us from gathering in person, but I am grateful we are gathered in spirit over Zoom and I welcome you to this time. Uh, one thing to note, I in your bulletin, it, we were gonna have to switch things around because we will not have a communion service. So, and there'll be a few parts of the service that will be moved about, but I will give you a heads up about that as we go through the, through the liturgy. Please join me in singing our opening hymn, Come Thou Almighty King. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. O judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share in the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first lesson is from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, 
and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. A number of years ago, I was privileged to officiate at the wedding of a daughter of a friend of mine. Joanna and I have been dear friends since birth, as both of our families have summered on the same island in Maine for generations. 
One of the many things we have in common is a love of dancing. Joanne and I have been each other's dance partners for decades, letting loose at each um, dancing event that the island offers. Sure, we dance with our husbands, but we always make time to jump around with each other as well. As the mother of the bride, Joanna had been a bit anxious in the days leading up to the wedding. So when the ceremony on the beach was over and the guests gathered at the reception, she could finally breathe a sigh of relief. To work off her energy, as soon as the band struck up their first number, Joanna hit the dance floor. I flung off my clergy collar and was right behind her. And then we began to exuberantly flail about with great abandon. I later heard that several of the guests asked the bride, who is that dancing with your mother? The bride replied, don't you recognize her? It's the minister. I think there must be something hardwired in humanity to enjoy dancing with others, dancing in community. We all become a little more loose, joyful, and intimate from the experience. Back in the fourth century, the great church theologian, St. Gregory of Nazianzus, thinks about God in this same way. He comes up with a word to describe it called perichoresis. Peri in Greek means around. Choria means dance. Perichoresis is dancing around, or what St. Gregory calls the divine dance. It's his way of describing the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, creator, redeemer, sustainer. God is three persons all dancing together in harmony to the music of the universe. God is one, but three dancers. And God's love is so full and so joyful that it can't stand still. At the beginning of time, God the Trinity, so moved by love for each other, overflowed in love and sought more things to love. And to that end, God the Trinity created the universe. We are an expression of God's love. And this universe has no purpose but to be loved by God and to be loved in return. But humanity, as part of that creation, turned away from God and believed it could stand alone apart from God. This is what we call sin. But God, the Trinity, has the desire to swoop down and scoop all of creation, including humanity, into the divine dance. God's inner life. So if God is Trinity, three persons, then God's very nature is relationship within God's very self. The Trinity is God dancing with God's self, love expressing itself in relationship. The Almighty wants all of us to enter into that dance. It's about being taken up into the divine life. That's why God sent Jesus, the second person of the Trinity to earth, to invite us more fully into the divine dance and those relationships of love. Jesus is the incarnation, the enfleshment of God, the human and divine in one. Christ is the bridge between humanity and the divine dance. Someone once said that the church is the people of God dancing on pilgrimage. The church is the people of God dancing on pilgrimage. What a great vision. Our lives are a spiritual journey seeking God, seeking to fill that empty spot in our heart, which can only be filled by the love of God. And as we, most, we move closer, we begin to hear the music, begin to move in step. We begin to dance in community. Several years ago, I took a trip to San Francisco uh, for, for my sister's wedding with um, my husband and family, my mom was there, and Bill and mom and I went to worship at an Episcopal church in San Francisco called St. Gregory of Nyssa, which is a very well-known uh, atypical Episcopal church. And one of the pieces that's a little atypical about it is they dance as part of their liturgy. 
is really fascinating. They sort of have one part of the church where everyone sits and listens to the to the readings and the prayers and the sermon, and then they dance over to another part of the church where they gather around a circular altar and celebrate communion. And the way the dance move is, is it's very simple. So everyone holds their hymn book in their left hand and they take their right hand and put it on the shoulder of the person in front of them. So there's several long lines of people and we sing our hymn. And as we sing, we move in step, one, two steps forward, one step back and then a little swerve. And then you do one, two, back, swerve. And it's beautiful. So we're all singing this hymn and we're sort of dancing and moving. And then we all are sort of circling the altar. And then at the end of the hymn, we're all around the altar. And it really creates this powerful sense of, of community and unity. What doesn't work is solitary dancing, other than perhaps what you do in front of the mirror in the privacy of your own room. But salvation doesn't happen in a vacuum. We can't work out our relationship with God all by ourselves, sitting alone at home. Sometimes people say, oh, I don't need church. I can talk to God just fine by myself. We have a strong streak of independence here in the U.S., which serves us well in many circumstances, but not this one. Sure, you can pray to God all by yourself, and, and you should. All of us need to have personal relationships with the Almighty. But by itself, it is not enough. The Lord calls us into community. We are to dance together, even when we step on each other's toes and bump into each other. That's why we worship in church, so we can dance with Jesus together and with each other. Yet not just the church, but all of humanity is created in the image of God. So think about this. If God is Trinity, if God is relationship within God's self, and we are created in the image of God, who is relationship, the divine dance, what does that say about us? It means that humanity too, in its very nature, is communal. It means the divine dance is not only with God, but with each other, both in and outside the church. We are in relationship with the homeless woman, the Taliban terrorist, the ruthless businessman, the shrill mother-in-law, our Uncle Harry, who always wants to borrow money. These people, too, whether they know it or not, are created in the image and likeness of God and reflect the divine dance. We must recognize that part of their identity when we encounter them. Even when the dance is broken and the relationship twisted through sin, we are still called to reflect the hope of the undivided Trinity. We must treat all people with respect, compassion, and a desire to be in community without condoning their sin. Christians know that one day that hope will be a reality. The great joy of the Trinity is that we don't have a, a lonely, static God, but one who is alive and vibrant within God's very self. God is one, yet God is interactive. In the immortal words of the Bee Gees, I want to put on my, my, my boogie shoes and just to boogie with you. Amen. Now our service will switch around from what's in the bulletin and we will now sing the hymn that is listed under our offertory entitled God Creator source of healing.
We will continue with the Nicene Creed found on page six in your bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Prayers of the People Almighty God, the Peterson family gives a donation to the Bread of Life Ministry and Thanksgiving for 20 years at Emmanuel. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That, that we, be, we the, all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they, that may, they may be, be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That, that there may be justice and peace on earth. earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. We pray especially for those suffering from COVID, their loved ones and healthcare professionals. In our parish family, we pray for Amy, Arthur, Bruna, Doris Butler, Gwen Chambers, Cheryl, Jane Dubler, David Fieldhouse, Mark Gallagher, Jack Giambasari, Gianna, Pat Gutro, Ed, Ed Sr. and Eddie Guy Jr., the Hallowell and Armstrong families, JC, JD, John, Scott Johnson, Samantha Nibbs, Angela Cox, George Lloyd, Sandy McGee, Molly Mattimore, Michael, Becky Miller, Ginny Moyer, Vicki Oman, Joseph Oliveri, Jim O'Reilly, Lisa Pappas, Lois Peterson, Joan Robillard, John F. Ross, Brian Smith, Meredith Souter, Bill and Jan Walsh, Bob Weatherly, and Carl Rickstam. That they, they may, may be delivered, delivered from, from their distress. distress. Give to the departed eternal rest, especially all of the veterans who have gone on for eternal life. Let light perpetually shine upon us. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. 
we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Please greet each other with a sign of peace. Happy Sunday, everyone. Our announcements today are uh, brief. Just a reminder, we've got evening prayer every Wednesday at 6 o'clock and Bible study every Thursday morning at 1030. Both are lively groups with a great gathering. So even if you've never joined us before, we'd love to see you. And your friends and others are also welcome to join us since both are on Zoom. Are there other announcements? Our offertory, we thank you for your presence and prayers for the parish, for our ministries, for our community dancing together in our hearts and for your presence this day and for your support in time, talent, and treasure. It takes so many people to pull um, a parish together and to do all the wonderful things that you all do. So I thank you for that. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Last night, you should have received in your email from Lisa, <clears throat> the prayer for spiritual communion. Let us now say this together. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. May God keep you in all your days. May Christ shield you in all your ways. May the Spirit bring you healing and peace. And may God, the Holy Trinity, drive all darkness from you and pour upon you blessing and light. Amen. Now let us sing our closing hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy.
Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you all for joining us on our this morning. Our blessings to you who are um, have other plans. Um, I, I want to quick thank you to everybody who made today's worship possible. Holly Hartman, Mike Salvatore, Amy Forsyth, Nikki Nash, uh, Nikki Nash McIsaac, um, Kim Collins, Wendy Dennis, Lisa Ventura. Um, doing a quick presto changeo to be outside last week and then back inside this week actually a lot of work behind the scenes and i'm grateful to all of them for stepping up and and adapting 